Well, good morning from Walla Walla, Washington, and it's a very cold morning out there. And uh, the good news is I'm almost over my cold, and the bad news is that it's spreading everywhere. And people I know are getting it and not feeling too good. But you'll get better after a while. So it, <laughs> I'm uh, having a little coffee here, and it's, it's very early too, it's, you know. Mm. Now that's good coffee. Well, I still got all these projects going here, and uh, here's my milling machine thing. Uh, here's that uh, um, 50 taper uh, ER40 collet truck that was bent, and uh, I sawed that off. And I stuck that in a lathe and a dial indicator, and it seems to be good. I don't know where the bend is, but uh, the shank uh, is good. And it's got an internal thread here, and I'm going to make a plug and uh, get it so I can uh, put boring heads uh, in the 50 taper spindle here on this thing. I've got quite a few things to do with this whole machine. <laughs> now, over... Over here at the tool and cutter grinder, let's talk about some tool making. And uh, you got to see this. Now, now the cutter grinder is extremely difficult to get a camera around. So I got this 50-year-old tripod here. And uh, it's like really tall. It, uh, I think it goes 12 feet tall. But anyway, I got it up there and I got this uh, uh, arm on it. And I can straddle everything. Let's get it hooked up here. And we'll talk about those cutters that I was making. Let's look at those right here. I hope this thing focuses. This is one of those GoPro cameras. It's not really made for macro. But maybe it'll come into focus. It's a, a D-type bit. It's got a it's got a flat to locate it, and it cuts on both sides. And the length determines the diameter. Okay, of the bore. And uh, <laughs> it can't be resharpened uh, this way. But if you look. Uh, where is it? What side? Right there. I ground a little flat along that edge there. It can be resharpened by uh, cutting it back this way. Yeah. Okay, so there's... Uh, I kicked out four of these and I'm set up to... Uh, I, I uh, uh, of course, screwed up four. This is kind of a fun... Uh, thing to do and it's good to do different things. It just kind of keeps you sharp, right? You got to do something even if it's wrong <laughs> Okay, uh, let's look over here real quick now <coughs> Excuse me that lingering cold <coughs> Now here's the uh, The bar that, the, that these cutters go through. Let me grab one here. And it, it's three quarter inch and the cutter is uh, uh, one inch and plus 81 thousandths. So uh, this is not one that I made. But uh, so the bar has a hole through it and a, a set screw to hold this. And I've got a better idea. And, <laughs> and uh, there's kind of, uh, uh, people don't think of using carbide very much. They think it's hard to grind. But it's actually uh, a lot easier to grind than high-speed steel. And uh, it's, the only drawback is, is that dust. And you don't want to breathe the dust. So what I would do, this is my idea, is to... Uh, like, just take an end mill and slot this thing, you know, in two places, and grind carbide, grind the carbide down, and, and have carbide grind each mandrel, 
And you could do uh, over a hundred uh, jobs with it. And even more ideal would be to uh, put three pieces of carbide, but you need uh, you need a micrometer like this, a VM for micrometer to do three cutters. And I'm going to do a lot of three cutter stuff. I ended up buying these on eBay real cheap. Um, I used to borrow these from a guy I know, but he's, he's just getting so old, it, you know. I don't know. I don't want to borrow anything from him. <laughs> he's got, anyway. So, uh, we'll do that. Now, yeah, I do believe that this is, uh, would be the best way to go to uh, not do this. And, and and do this, use carbide, okay? Now, when I'm talking about safety and stuff like that, I want to point out, yeah, yeah the carbide dust is bad, but uh, you really got to be careful with vitrified uh, grinding wheels because they can explode. And uh, if, if you bump into them, and you got to think about this table here, you, it, it weighs over 300 pounds, and it's on ball bearings, and you can crash something into this wheel, and if it's rotating, it'll explode. And they go bang. Really, they do. They sound like a, like a revolver or something going off. And one of the things about tool and cutter grinding is it's kind of like woodworking in, in the fact that your cutter or, you know, or your wheel or your saw is spinning at the same speeds that uh, woodworking equipment is. And it, like woodworking equipment, you see saws with a big red stop button on them, you know, I mean, huge. Well, I'll tell you what, that ain't worth, <laughs> ain't worth much at all because I've had things go wrong on table saws. I've had wheels explode on these things and it happens so fast you find yourself across the room, you know, going, wow, what just happened? Then you go over and hit the button to stop it. <laughs> when things go wrong, it happens quick. So it, if, you, if you're passing the wheel, try not to stay on the side of the wheel in the blast zone, okay? And put up a barrier if you can. Now, when I, I don't know if you can see, when, when I touch the tool to the wheel, I'm standing aside, you know, not in line with it because that's, uh, that's a danger point right there. Also, I want to point out so many things. Uh, this, this grinder is just so useful. I, I use this uh, uh, to grind tools by hand, and I got it set up to grind the notches, you know, here. And I, I'm grinding the notches, uh, sticking this in this old uh, KD uh, K type uh, tool holder. But I needed to uh, touch up a little notching tool here, a high speed steel. So I just uh, stuck this vise in here. And then uh, see, I can come in here and just touch that up by hand. Just use that as a, like a bench grinder. But the wheels are just so much better, you know. And uh, so I don't have a bench grinder in here. I just use this, you know. I do everything with this thing. So, uh, you know, they're really quite a versatile machine. But I want to point out, you know, again, that you got to be very careful. And most of the time or often, uh, it's not practical to have a guard over the wheel because uh, I I've got a box full of wheels and I got some on the wall there you see they're all different sizes and you'd have to have uh, 20 guards or something so uh, I think this uh, my tripod's gonna work good whoop I hope it didn't turn anything off there and I can lock it see and, and then I can actually get around and work the machine and go, hey, here I am working this machine. And I'm, I'm really glad that uh, many of you enjoyed these uh, cutter grinder videos. 
And uh, I think it's a very important tool and uh, it'll make you a monster in the machine shop once you uh, get used to this. Okay, now I'm going to uh, load this video and I just got all kinds of things to do and I'll just keep turning the camera on, okay? If you'll keep watching, I'll keep turning the camera on. And I hope you're all doing well and uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.